live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Houston Life. It's Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. I'm Derek Shore along with Courtney Zavala. Did the viewers at home see us dancing just now? I think so. Listen, it's a catchy tune. We're dancing on today's show. I just couldn't help myself. We like to dance sometimes behind the scenes, so I'm sorry if y'all had to see that, but we're, we're going to have so sorry. much fun. Coming up on today's show, uh, social media stars The Broadway Husbands will join us. A look at their journey from Broadway to fatherhood, moving from the Big Apple to the Bayou City. How sweet is this? I love that sweet baby. Plus, it's Tuesday, and that means we're catching Dancing With Myself on NBC. Now you see why we were dancing, and that also means we're dancing here on Houston Life. We're learning some cool moves with a Houston Rockets dancer who is featured on the program as well. That's going to be a good time. Also, Lauren Kelly is catching up with an actress from Houston who made it big time in Hollywood and has now returned home. Hi, Lauren. Hey, guys. I am catching up with actress, singer, and Houstonian Miss Haley Duff. We are chatting about her recent move back home to Texas and her latest movie. But for now, I'm going to send it back over to you guys. They yes. always <laughs> Perfect moves, Lauren. You're so limber. Wow. <laughs> Before we get to all of that, let's get a look at your forecast on this Tuesday. Frank, how's it going out there? Get it, Frank. Uh, yeah. Jimmy. The thumb guy. Oh, the thumb guy. Oh, you're the thumb. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I learned to dance in the 70s. I don't know about you. Uh, <laughs> Same. Not clearly as much rain today. Let's uh, start with temperatures. 95 degrees out there. Plenty hot. 96 up in Huntsville. 92 in Wharton. 91 in Galveston. So if you're walking Riley, what an adorable collie. 94, 94, 92. 90 degrees, a little bit of a northeast wind because of this low out in the Gulf. In fact, you can see from that radar, we're not getting a lot. A few showers here and there. We've Go down toward Victoria to San Antonio. That's where a little action has popped up. And then the system that we're watching in the Gulf that I've highlighted, that's going to be the big player because that's going to continue to move toward Brownsville. So some chance of rain Wednesday. But look at Thursday and then again Friday. We could see an easy two to three to even four and five inches of rain in spots. I'll have details on that and what it means to the next several days coming up in just about 30 minutes. Okay, Frank, it's busy out there. We know you've got a close eye on it. We'll see mm. you in just a little Wow. Okay. Get it. Okay, so now at, uh, <laughs> I know, the thumb dance. Actually, when in doubt, just use the thumb, right? Seriously, and apparently I run like this because people have given me a thumbs up before, but that's apparently how my. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> you know, everyone has their own style. I am sorry for being surprised by this. You, you run apparently, like this? Apparently, I don't like when my hands are hot, so apparently it's like away from me, but I didn't realize that my thumbs are actually. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you don't like when your hands are hot? I don't like it when my hands get hot. So you stick your thumbs up? Well, yeah, it's just like, you know, because when you run, your hands kind of do this, right? So I just kind <laughs> of... Never mind. Wow. It's you know, sometimes the more you explain, the more confused I am. I guess we're not going to get to the bottom of that one. Hey, something really magical happened 29 years ago, people, and this definitely deserves a two thumbs up. For sure. 29 years ago, well, not only was I born, <clears throat> plus a few years, it was the release of Hocus Pocus. Do you remember this? Yes, one of my favorite movies. Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, SJP, also known as Sarah Jessica Parker, the Sanderson sisters. I cannot believe this was the 1993 film. I did not see it until last year. I think it was during COVID. I thought I told you this. What? I hadn't seen Hocus Pocus. You know me. I was raised watching like church movies. We didn't watch. Yeah, actual but at movies. 17, you moved to L.A., land <laughs> of the movies, and you didn't see this until last year. I have a lot of catching up to do. But here's the thing: it's a great. <gasps> You're film. You're not a it's true a classic. Fan, basically, I am a true fan, and Brandon is a huge fan. Hocus Pocus two. It is coming out this fall. In case y'all haven't seen this little preview, they look exactly the same. So watch good. this clip. Sisters, I bet you're looking for the stage. Always. 
I cannot mean, wait. Can you believe? I can, and I'm so years excited. Later, and they look just the same. So great. It's a great movie. It's a good one. It's a classic. So mark your calendar. September 30th. Okay, so a long, long time ago, like a lifetime ago, I had the pleasure of interviewing Martin Sheen on the set of The West Wing. Do you remember that? Love, great show. It was a, it was fantastic. a fantastic show. They shot it at Warner Brothers in Burbank. So Martin Sheen. Did you ever see it? Just kidding. <sighs> But seriously, did you I've ever I've heard it's episode? a really great series. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot to watch, okay? Listen, so Martin Sheen, you know that's not his real name. Right. His real name is Ramon Estevez, Estevez, which is interesting because that is one of his son's names. So he has Charlie Sheen. Yes. He has Emilio, Emilio Estevez. Estevez. He has Ramon Estevez. And then Renee. <laughs> Estevez. Did, I didn't know that he, those other two. So he does have a couple yeah. other daughters. So the thing is, a lot of celebrities, or if you're if you're starting in the acting world, a lot of people considering having a stage name. And he is now saying that he regrets having a stage name. He's the son of a Spanish immigrant father and an Irish immigrant mother. And in an interview recently with Closer Weekly, he says he wishes he had used his real name. You know, yeah, and his kid, he uh, didn't. I think there was also a conversation about Emilio Estevez that he had with him when he was ready to kind of come on to the acting world. Well, right? yeah, because Emilio Estevez's agent said, hey, you should use the stage name of Sheen to get uh, you instead of Estevez. But Martin Sheen was saying his passport, his marriage license, yep. his birth certificate, they all, his driver license, they all say his real name. You know, I kind of disagree, though, because I think that if you're a public figure, it's kind of nice to have a fake name. Like, how do you know Derek Shore is not my fake name? Yeah. It's kind of nice to have a fake name. Well, you always talk about Bobby Sharon Shore, so I don't think it's fake. So, but I, I, I don't, I know, because we've seen your high school photos and things, but my problem is I would be standing there waiting for, you know, Susie's <laughs> reservation and never answer it because I'd forget that Susie was my real name you or have fake two name. Separate names. I, you know, I couldn't keep track. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems sort of like unreal. Mm. You know. Well, I think it's a nice, uh, you know, safety. Maybe it causes like an identity cross crisis. You know, my mom has been receiving mail for Sharon Stone for years. Really? Yeah, I don't think it's actually meant for Sharon Stone. I think they just spell my mom's name wrong. It could be. It could be. Anyway, what you got? Okay, so this is really interesting. You know, we've talked about people having strange sleeping habits or people who live with a partner that snores. Oh, have you heard yeah. about Carson Daly? He recently talked about this on the air, saying that he and his wife, Siri, um, have basically taken a sleep divorce. Hey, Siri, I'd like to sleep separately? Yes. That's what he said. Yeah. Wow. And because he has sleep apnea, it's like a whole thing. Oh, and yeah. so they've just decided this is going to work better. Um, and so, but this is a very common thing that sleep divorces are happening. Where people sleep in separate rooms or separate beds. Or I think Carson said sometimes he sleeps like in the guest room on the couch or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, what? Yeah, I mean, they have you, but sleep divorce is basically you actually have two separate beds. Good night, partner. Good night, partner. And then you carry on your own ways. Is that how it, is that how the conversation <laughs> usually goes? I think whatever your relationship, obviously it's your relationship. You can figure out whatever rules work for you. Yeah, and, and listen, a lot of people we spend credit a lot of time sleeping. Well, and the sleep divorce can maybe save your marriage, right? Absolutely. I, on the other hand, get blamed for taking up the whole bed because I just want to be closer and closer to Brandon. He's like, bro, I'm falling off. You should do the Scandinavian sleep thing. You have separate blankets. Anyway, speaking of couples. And we talked about the movie, the Hocus Pocus trailer. Yeah. There's another movie getting some major buzz. It's Barbie. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so Check out the new picture just snapped of Ryan Gosling as Ken and Margot Robbie as Barbie herself. Look at this. I mean, the outfit, the chat earlier this month on Warner Brothers released this picture. Wow. And they look great. Yeah, they look great. They look so good. And I think right now, maybe today, they were shooting a scene in Venice, California, where they're rollerblading. And the movie doesn't hit theaters until July. That's sooner than I thought it was. Next July. Next July. Next so we July, have to 2023. Wait a full year. Yes. But listen, the two bustling stars, they wanted to, of course, come to Houston and visit Houston Life. What? And we couldn't say no. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Ken,
they made the rounds here. Wow, they really checked it. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I'm sure it was fascinating. They're so cute. Yeah, they look good. They look better in real life than they do in the film, if I do say so myself. <laughs> all right, still to come, actress, singer, and Houstonian Haley Duff. She's chatting all about her latest movie and her favorite memories of Houston. Plus, from the Big Apple to Houston to fatherhood, social media stars and dads, the Broadway husbands will join us when Houston Life returns right after this. Welcome back to Houston Life. It's time now for our H-Town sit down. Let's meet today's guests. June is Pride Month, and today we're featuring Broadway actors and power couple Brett Shuford and Stephen Hanna. The pair moved to Houston from New York in 2020, and they just celebrated the birth of their first child in March. They're known as the Broadway husbands to their 100,000 plus Instagram followers and YouTube subscribers. The couple documented their surrogacy journey on their channels to help other couples navigate the process. And today they join us on Houston Life. And Brett Schubert and Stephen Hanna are joining us now along with their newborn son, Maverick, who has been quiet as He's a mouse ready. up until this very, very <laughs> moment. The it's a baby world. Parenthood. It's okay. Yeah, he has, he, he'll do what, his, what he wants to do. Yes, exactly. So. He He's only three hi. months old. Say Welcome, hi. Maverick. Hey. Hey. Okay, okay. okay. Oh. So sweet. I well, know. Guys, you have quite a story. Married in 2011. Yes. And I understand, Brett, your family is here in Houston. You're from here. Yeah. And so after pursuing your lives and careers in New York City, you decided to make a return home to Houston. Yeah, we did. I mean, it was all sort of circumstances because of the pandemic. Sure. Uh, I was doing Wicked on Broadway at the time, and our industry completely shut down. We had wanted to start a family and have a child, and we've been in the process of having a baby since 2018. Yeah, and then th everything moved us here. Stephen got a job teaching here in ballet, and it was only supposed to be for three months. Okay. <laughs> and we bought a house, and now I have a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, that's what months. happens, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Houston kind of sucks you in. It's such yeah. a great city. What does everybody back in New York think? That you ride horses all around, and <laughs> you've got your wagon? Like that's usually what everybody in the you know New York or. Yeah. Uh, I mean, usually it's, how's Texas? And I always tell them, it's actually amazing. It's such a beautiful place to be. I yeah, love and they're like, aren't you hot all the yeah. time? And like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we don't much. have to shovel humidity. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, that's a good, that's a really good thing. Listen, it's so amazing. First of all, both of you have such incredible careers on stage, uh, ballet, and then Broadway. Um, when you decided to to come here, I know it was during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but to be able to have your roots, to have your baby here, and and to really call Houston home. Tell us what that means for you, and also to have sort of the following and sharing what you your, your whole story on social media. I mean, I think it means, I think we felt at home here because of Brett's family. And I think one of the things that's so important to us is showing, um, you know, two men living happy and healthily, having a great marriage, able to have a family, and where we're doing it. And we're and doing, doing it. what we love. I yeah. think that's such a huge part of yeah. our mission is to show people, because growing up here, I didn't know that I could have this life, mm -hmm. right. you know? And yeah. so to see two, two people who get to do what they love, get paid to do what they love, share that experience, share their family with people, I hope encourages other people to know that it's possible. Yeah. And on your social media channels, the Broadway Husbands, you have your YouTube channel and Instagram. You all have shared some very personal and emotional stories because obviously becoming a parent is one of the most personal decisions any couple or family can make or any single person can make really. Uh, was the whole goal to inspire other people who have had trouble navigating this journey? Yes. yes, yes, completely. Yes. That was completely the goal. Um, and also, it's interesting, it kind of became like a diary for us. Mm -hmm. And because our journey was so long, we went back and saw some early posts. And A, I, I look younger. Um, <laughs> and it's just like interesting to see the journey for us as well and to have it as a record for Maverick. There's a lot of mystery around yeah. surrogacy and the process and a lot of people who don't really understand it. And it's a very complex thing. No two journey is the same. Mm -hmm. And I was I think we were hoping that not only would Maverick have something to look back and see everything we went through to help him become who he is, but we also hope other people might, you know, learn a little bit about how to approach 
other people who've gone through this process or if they want to go through it themselves. Right. And you know, you both just celebrated Father's Day, your very <laughs> first one, because Maverick, as we said, is just three months old. Mm -hmm. And I bet that was just so incredibly special for, for you all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but before Maverick was born, we used to always get a little bit sad at Father's Day because we wanted to have a kid so bad. And this was the first year where we actually, I think in a long time, we're like, wow, we get to actually celebrate this. So yeah, it was special. Happy belated Father's Thank Day. Thank you. Yes. You she know, has settled in nicely. Now that uh, same-sex couples, I mean, decades ago, this was a very novel idea, right? Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, I have friends whose children are graduating from college now. <laughs> And now that we can see that, that children raised by same-sex couples, they're totally fine. They're <laughs> totally okay. Yeah. I mean, what has the response been for you all? Because there are a lot of people out there who still don't quite understand. And there's one thing that we can all agree on, that you can't accidentally get pregnant. <laughs> it's a very intentional process when you are a same-sex couple mm -hmm. trying to have a child. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think coming back into the world, because now he's three months, so we've started to kind of step outside our <laughs> cocoon a little. Um, you know, I've noticed that a lot of people are inquisitive and are unsure of who he belongs to. So that's always interesting and I have to kind of just, you know, we're like, I, I'm his dad and this is also his dad and they're always a little confused and, you know. He's passed out. He and he's passed totally passed out. out. He's so yes. happy. I do think that there's, you know, people who, who've not experienced seeing same-sex couples with kids um, ha make a lot of assumptions because they've never experienced it. And so there's a lot of curiosity that happens. And I think we always have to try to keep that in mind for ourselves, that they're curious and they want to know. And if you're curious, there's a lot of great resources out there. Google, yeah. learn, like understand mm -hmm. um, the, the differences between that and heterosexual couples. And because uh, there are differences in ways to approach it. So people say, who's the dad? Is that what they say to you? Or maybe well, we not in so many words. We were somewhere yesterday and we were with my brother and his girlfriend. And so there were four of us. No, it was just her and Brett and I standing there and like, who does he belong to? What's going on here? And I was like, well, I'm his dad and this is his dad. Well, like, and they were like, well, who's she? I'm like, oh, this is just my brother's girlfriend. You know, so yes. They're very confused, yes. you know. And it, somebody actually came up to us. We were walking him in a stroller in our neighborhood and somebody said, oh, did you get a dog? Yeah, that actually Oh, like a dog sort of. stroller. <laughs> they, wow. Because they, I think they just were like two men with a stroller. Yeah. They must have a dog, right? And we're like, no, this is a baby, you wow. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a very beautiful baby. Thank and you. real quickly, we're almost out of time. What's what's next career-wise for y'all? Can you? Well, I'm perf I'm going to be performing at the Lake Tahoe Dance Festival in Lake Tahoe, July 27th, 8th, and 9th. Cool. And I'll be performing at Tuts actually this this next season. I don't know that I can announce what it is, but okay. I will be. Uh, performing a touch, so stay tuned. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Love it. Very, well, very nice. I know, and we love Maverick's debut. I think it's his television debut. Yeah. Say hello. Say hello. Oh, he's sleeper. He's asleep, oh. but say hello. I saw it. There he is. There he is. He is adorable. Hello, Brett, Stephen, Maverick, oh. we're so glad uh, to have your little family with us here Thank in Houston. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much Appreciate for having us. Appreciate your story. Yeah, come back anytime, and best of luck navigating all those conversations. We know there are a lot of them out there, but it's very important yeah. uh, to open people's eyes. For a link to connect with Broadway husbands and dads, Brett and Steven, and their son Maverick, you can visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. And still to come on Houston Life, are you about to be a new mom or dad or perhaps a first-time grandparent? Coming up, we're going to show you one of the most important things you need to know to keep them all safe. Also, have you ever wondered what's your own personal style? Is your bedroom in need of an Instagram-inspired makeover? We've got you covered when Houston Life returns right after this. What's your style? When it comes to your living space, the bedroom should be the sanctuary in the home. Some prefer an airy monochromatic look, while other folks might want bold, bright colors. No matter your style, Maria Sotolongo believes there is something for everyone, and she is here with her expert tips to help us design the best space yes. for our home, for our bedroom. Some people want those bright colors, so when they yes. wake up in the morning, it really gets them out of bed, right? Right, guess what I like, the brightness, but my husband likes more of the neutrals. 
what about your kids? What do they like? Or a guest room, what could that be, right? So the possibilities are endless. And yes, we are here to talk about those tips. So 50 Flora can guide you along that path. Derek. Okay, and a lot of people, we have this beautiful room example behind us, Maria. A lot of people may look at a room and say, wow, I really like what I'm seeing here in this magazine. Yes. But when it comes to actually deconstructing that room and figuring out the pieces that created this mm -hmm. room, that's where a lot of people struggle. Right, because you know, some people might think neutrals is only grays, but other people think the browns are also neutral. So in the photo that we uh, can show you right here behind us, right, that is pretty much neutral toned, even though you have the wood that is a little bit darker. Uh, so again, neutrals are going to go with anything that is that sandy, brownish, tanned, or gray uh, palette. So this, for example, would be great if you look over there on your side. Uh, this is maybe a little bit lighter, but these over here, these on the bottom could be considered as more tanned, you know, more neutral, especially this one over here. And then you've got, again, so many different colors that you can up. choose from. Yes, and we're gonna bring all of these to you. So you go, okay, do I want the oak in the natural or in the cherry? Again, there's so many colors to choose from, but we we are going to walk you every step of the way. And when it comes to neutrals too, I mean, technically any shade of brown, no matter how light yes. or dark, it's still a neutral, it's right? It's a neutral, exactly. Okay, so it looks like we've got a new photo behind us. This is a little more contemporary. Mm -hmm. uh, the floors are a bit darker in this room. Right, and you've added uh, that touch of nature in there, so that's also a little bit different. The greenery kind of also brings in a new vibe. It makes it look uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, I don't know, tropical, but whether the plant is there or not, what about the floor? So the wide planks are going to be something for people to consider. The plank size, I should say. These are a little bit wider, as yeah. you can see, either by this color here or this right here. These are also uh, going to come in different colors, but the ones we're showing you right here is not just for the colors, but because of the wide uh, plank. And that is definitely going to bring that room into a different feel. And uh, again, we're going to walk you every step of the way at 50 floor. It's interesting how the plank width really varies decade by decade because in my grandparents' home, yes. which was built in the early 19th, hundreds they had wood floors but they had very skinny little planks very slim beautiful yes. beautiful but these days it seems that the wider planks are more in style that is more in okay we've got another bedroom behind us and this is a cool shot this is a little more contemporary and we can see in the split screen mm -hmm. that we have the wood floors on the left and carpeting on the right carpeting a lot of people still love in the bedroom I know right so we also at 50 floor have every kind of uh, flooring not just the carpet like we have here different uh, kind of colors and shades that we will, of course, bring to the comfort of your own home. And again, we've got all kinds of Berber or just the different loop sizes and the different feel on your feet. So we've got it all, all the quality materials, all the quality flooring that you would have at a big box store, but we just bring that showroom to your house. And that is how 50 Floor is really different. Maria Sotolanco, thank you. All month long, 50 Floor has a special offer for Houston Life viewers. 60% off installation on all carpet, hardwood, laminate, and vinyl. Just call 877-50-FLOOR. That's 877-503-5667. Or you can visit 50floor.com. Now let's send things over to Courtney. Okay, Derek, thanks so much. Maybe your kid is babysitting for the first time this summer or you're a new grandparent. Coming up, you're going to want to hit record on the TV, the life-saving skills we should all know. And later, fresh off her run on NBC's hit competition show, Dancing With Myself, a local Rockets dancer brings her moves to our studio. Houston Life will be right back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Houston Life. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Tuesday at 3.30. Yeah, glad to have you with us. And, uh, you know, Ken and Barbie, we're so excited about that new film. I still yeah, can't wait. believe they, they stopped by Houston Life. That was such a nice treat. It was a nice treat. And we have a few outfit ideas. Um, this is going to be definitely a good uh, Halloween costume idea. But who wore it better? I what mean, do you think? I think uh, you gave Barbie a run for her money. I, I, I think Ryan Gosling hit it. Home run. Home run. I like your version of Ken, Derek. Sorry, Derek Shore, not happening. No. Oh. It's the wig. The wig is all wrong. No. That's a wig? No, actually. My hair was just temporarily bleached. No, you just didn't put the gel in it. 
you know, the that's roots are the darker. Problem. That's the problem. Maybe listen, your friends let's, in Studio A, maybe they can weigh in on Yeah, this. exactly. Andy, Christine, Frank, any yeah. ideas? Well, listen, I met Ken and Barbie in the lobby when I was coming back from lunch. I, I was so starstruck. Weren't I didn't know lovely? what to say. Well, it was their face. The skin is so perfect, isn't it? <laughs> well, it really, it really was. I saw Ken, though, and I was like, where's your ascot? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but aren't you struck by it? not only are they beautiful on the outside, they are such good, good people on the they, inside. They Most really definitely. Are. Lots yeah. of, lots of perks. I saw the, the Barbie bright. mobile parked in the front. It's mm. really pretty. Yep. Yeah. Mm. The it's pink amazing Corvette. how tan both uh, you guys looked, like Ken looked. He looks so tan with that blonde hair. I was going to say, they're working right? on their tan right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, the summer As here in Houston. It's a good day for it, yeah, Frank. It's, it's perfect. It's warm again outside. Not those hundreds like we have seen. I think the ground moisture made it a little more humid. So 93, 95, 91 in Sugarland. 95 feels like 101 out there. Temperatures 92, 93 Conroe feeling like 96. Huntsville is at 96. We have a little bit of a, a drier northeast wind in here. So we haven't really been able to get a whole lot going on radar. Certainly not not like yesterday. This is the sea breeze. You see that line right there. So a few sea breeze showers breaking out. We may see a little bit yet. I don't think it's going to be a lot. The action is more down to our south. You see between Corpus and San Antonio and then this low that we continue to watch here. That is really going to be what we have a focus on, especially as we get into Thursday and Friday. Let me show you why. There's the low moving toward Brownsville. That's for tomorrow. And then as we go into Thursday, it starts to move on land and closer. So more of this moisture gets pulled in. So Thursday afternoon and then Thursday night and then Friday morning and Friday afternoon, we're really going to have to watch for some heavy rain coming in here. And we'll talk about just how much coming up at four. In the meantime, 40% for tomorrow. So some pop up storms tomorrow. But once we get into Thursday, especially the afternoon, evening and the morning, Friday and Friday afternoon, that's when we have that 80% chance for some heavy storms moving through and dropping some significant rain amounts. We can certainly see some street flooding, maybe more. We'll talk about it straight ahead at four. Andy? We'll stay weather aware, Frank. Thank you. Here's a look at some of the stories that we are working on for you this afternoon. First, the tragic story that we've been covering since last night. At least 51 migrants dead after being found in a tractor trailer in San Antonio. What we're learning about the victims and what we are learning about the investigation. Plus, a look at some of the other recent tragedies involving Texas human smuggling cases. Plus, legal challenges to the state's, quote, trigger ban that would have banned all abortions in Texas within a month. That ban has been placed on hold for now. The latest on what this means for abortions here in the state. Plus, it is a scam so convincing that one of our investigative reporters almost fell victim. In our Ask Amy report, Amy Davis shows you how to steer clear of fake customer service sites before they steal your valuable information. Yeah, so lots to cover at 4 o'clock today, you guys. All, All right, right, guys, we'll see you then. Okay. And for your health today, would you know what to do if somebody went into cardiac arrest right in front of you? Maybe at your house or at work, even a restaurant. It is a very scary situation, but one we all need to be prepared for. That is so true. You've probably seen CPR done in the movies and on TV, but you can learn more about it today alongside us here on Houston Life. Joining us today is Cynthia Stubbins, CPR trainer and volunteer with the American Heart Association. Cynthia, thank you so much for coming in. It's so important. Many of us learn CPR in in school, but as we were chatting before the show, the technique has changed significantly. Well, mainly there's a concentration on going deeper to be able to maintain a circulation going to the brain and to the major organs. It is important to maintain compressions. One of the things that it kind of started changing it was, do you need to breathe over this person? Maybe you don't. And we're going to talk about this difference today. In reality, an adult who suddenly collapsed, you really, if you don't want to, you don't have to breathe over that person. You'd be compressing the whole time until EMS arrived. You actually can double and triple their chance of survival by just simply compressing immediately as soon as the person collapses. So no more breaths that many of us learned where you do the chest compressions and then the breath. You're saying you can skip the breath, focus on the compressions. Exactly. Except if it's a child or an infant, children lose oxygenation at a really fast rate. So providing the ventilation could be ideal for that person. 
It's really fascinating. Just a, a few uh, statistics here. 70% out of hospital cardiac arrests happen in homes or workplaces. This is when seconds really count. And if you're one of those people that freeze, you may know what you're doing and you freeze. You hope somebody else in the area knows what they're doing as well. But the first tip to do if you see someone having some sort of cardiac arrest, you got to call for help, right? Exactly. So somebody suddenly collapses, a teenager or an adult who suddenly collapsed, the first thing you want to do is call 911. You want to activate emergency response immediately as soon as you can. Okay. Then, and then what? Then you're ready to learn? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's get so in anyway, it. You might have to learn this for somebody who you truly love and care. Four so out of the five cardiac arrest happens right at home. To someone you know. And how frustrating if someone you love needs help and you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's critical we all know this. Okay. So let's start. Okay. First, let's do one step back. So come on, the dramatic entrance. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, ready? A person suddenly collapsed in front of you. Okay. Action face. Oh! <gasps> Call oh, 911. No. <laughs> Call 911. <laughs> look, look and see. The scene is safe. Kick closer. Tap the person on the shoulder. Tap him and check for response. Hey there, it. hello. Are you okay? Now, but tap him with a little bit more energy. Okay. okay. Hello. hello. Are you okay? Hello. You need help? Are they responding? No. Point at somebody on Derek and tell Derek, call 911. Derek, call 911. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. on it, sister. Look and see if they're breathing. Look at the mouth, the chest, the tummy, the mouth, the chest, the tummy. Are they breathing? Yes. No. No. <laughs> no. No. They're not breathing. No. Sorry, no. I'm, a, I'm a hopeful. Not breathing. No breathing. No movement. You're going to begin CPR. We're going to learn hands-only CPR. So you're going to put your hand in the center of the chest, right in the center. Beautiful. With the heel of your hand on the center, right on the sternum. The other hand right on top, interlocking your fingers and having your arms nice and straight, and your shoulders above your wrist. Are you going to push hard? And oh, there you go. You're going to push hard and fast. Are you ready? Yes. Look, come on, help me. Okay, push. So straight down. Go. Straight down and keep your arms straight. Keep your arms straight. Don't bend your elbows. Keep your arms straight. Now, a great song to remember will be like the Staying Alive. Staying Alive. Yeah. Oh. Stay alive. So we need to go faster. Exactly. Uh, Let's go. Uh, 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 stay alive. Come on, Corny. Stay so alive. faster, right? Corny is a little faster uh, than fast. Oh, it's He's twice dying. as fast? There you go. Alive. We got it. Keep uh, your elbows uh, nice uh, and straight. Uh, stay alive. Keep your elbows straight and alive. lean forward. Uh, 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 uh staying alive. alive. Staying alive. Okay, you can do Cynthia. also Hips Don't Lie by Shakira if you would like. Okay. That's a good one, too. Let's talk about infant. And let's bring in Catherine Whaley, expectant mother and our yes, friend here hello. at Houston Life. And this is a critical step. A lot of people might say, I don't have a child, but we're around children all the time. Everyone needs to know how to save a child. We're around children and yes. families. Houston is a very family community oriented, so it's actually amazing that you're learning this. Okay, so children and families, okay, Shuba caregivers and families should be actually looking into learning CPR. And Absolutely. for this, it's a little bit different because hands-only CPR is just compressing the whole time until EMS arrive. You don't want to put your mouth on it? Then don't, okay? But compress the whole time. Now, when we're talking about infants, we're talking about breathing also as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a rate of 30 compressions to a, a two ventilation rate. Yes, okay. and you still okay. call 911 first. You still absolutely yes. call 911 Okay, first. do you want to show us what that looks like Absolutely, first? so okay. let's start yeah, with yeah, three yeah, step yeah, back. Okay. okay. Put, back. put a shocking face, ready? Right? Oh, okay. Oh, something happened. Oh my gosh. Oh my okay. gosh, baby. Exactly. Get closer and okay. tap the baby on the shoulder, on the feet, sorry. Tap him on, on the feet, on the feet. Tap him on the feet and say, okay. baby, are you okay? Are you okay? Point at somebody and say, Derek. Call Derek. 911, I'm, I'm on it. One. There I'm you go. It. While Derek's calling 911, we're going to look and see if they're breathing. We're going to look at the mouth, okay. the chest, mm -hmm. the tummy. No, Now, no how breathing. long do you think we should look for this breathing? Couple I mean, seconds. Yeah, not you're long. not exactly. long. Not long. Not About long. five seconds, five, ten seconds at the most. Short. Okay. No breathing, no movement. We're going to begin CPR. So you're going to put two fingers in the center of the chest. There you go. Right and Derek, since you're there, we're going to practice child CPR because there might be somebody who has a child ages one, two, puberty, a small child. So we're doing CPR with a big mannequin. Okay. Right with one hand. Fantastic. Okay. And you're going to push hard and fast. Yes. And, and here we're going, the babies, we're going to do it 30 times. Let's go. Okay. One, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How we count, Derek? Okay. 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 Cynthia Stubbins. Are you <laughs> <We're laughs> <30? laughs> There while we're this baby. <laughs> we will put these steps online. Yes. If you would like to find a CPR class near you or see a training video, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Ladies, Ladies thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right yes. back. Thank you. Stay in a
Actress, singer, and native Houstonian Haley Duff keeps quite the busy schedule these days. The mom of two and her husband recently moved back to Texas during the pandemic, but that hasn't slowed down Haley's acting career one bit. I got to chat with Haley and actor Quentin Aaron all about their latest heartfelt film, The Baby Pact, and a few of her favorite memories growing up right here in Houston. I went to your work, a nice older <laughs> gentleman said your van was there, but you weren't, so I called Rachel, said you weren't there either. But she said, when you get upset, you comfort eat ice cream. So, had a pretty good idea after that. Oh, maybe you should have been a detective. H-Town is the best. I got my H-Town girl, uh, Haley. My hometown girl. H-Town. Yeah. yeah, what's funny, Quentin, I, I don't know if you've ever been to Houston, but you should definitely come visit, but I will not recommend coming to visit in the next two, three months. Haley, don't you think that the heat is probably something Quentin would not like about Houston? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. We're, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm like, for all you new people to Texas, like, we're just preheating. We're not even to full temp yet. <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that. We are totally preheating. <laughs> yeah, we just wait till we hit August. But let's talk about the wedding pack too, the baby pack. You guys have taken it a step further, now on demand. Haley, we're going to start with you. Why don't you tell everybody where the sequel picks up? Well, the sequel picks up um, after the first movie ends, you know, it ends on this really happily ever after fairy tale moment for Elizabeth, where she's starting off her life and everything is great and wonderful. And uh, the second movie finds her in that moment of what do you do when things don't work out the way that you think they're going to? And um, how do you start over? Where do you even begin? Then the addition of Quentin Aaron as Joe Jr. Uh, really proves that, you know, good friends and family can get you through just about anything. All right, Quentin, let's talk a little bit about Joe Jr. What is it about this character that I know viewers are just going to love? Uh, you know, he's funny. He's supportive. He is he's the big gentle giant that arranges flowers, you know, and uh, he comes along to be a new best friend to, you know, one of his old friends from high school. He's like down for everything, you know, it's like it, he's her ride or die. Haley, final question for you, since we're talking about kids. What's your favorite memory as a little kid growing up here in Houston? Was it maybe Astroworld, Waterworld, Peppermint Park? What are we talking here? Oh, my gosh. I think my, um, so my favorite memories of Houston, to be honest with you, are the Houston Rodeo. And I just went this past year as well. Um, but I, you know, I grew up going to the rodeo as a kid all the time. Uh, every year and uh, the barrel racing, the mutton busting, all those things, you know, none of it's changed. It's exactly how it was when I was a kid. And there's something really um, heartwarming about that as well. So there's nothing better than watching your child ride a sheep as they mutton bust. I will say that is the best I, Houston memory. <laughs> I, think, I think the only difference now though is the kids wear helmets. Like for <laughs> sure in the 80s and 90s, the kids were not wearing helmets. <laughs> oh my god you're totally right you're That's totally hilarious. right now you see them when they have these little helmets on and you're like when do we start doing that <laughs> i gotta go to a rodeo i want to go <laughs> when you've got oh, an open invite next year absolutely well Haley and quentin the movie is out now the wedding pack to the baby pact on demand thank you so much for sharing the insight with us we can't wait to watch it it looks adorable i know it's got a great message and we appreciate you taking the time and and best of luck with everything and come see us uh back here in houston sometime soon okay i will thank will you do. so much and fun fact, Haley recently moved back to Texas from Los Angeles during the pandemic because ultimately she wanted a little more space and more fresh air for her family who now reside in Austin. That's great. They awesome. were at Barton Springs the other day by the pool. I was oh, like, no I know where that's at. Uh, if you guys want more with my interview with Haley and Quentin, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. That's so cute to see her. Remember, like mutton busting with no protection. Nothing. Yeah. Just hold on to the sheep's hair, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's she looks fun. so much like her sister, too. She does. More and more as she gets older. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. They're so sweet. Welcome really back cute. to Texas, Haley. All right, when we come back, want to learn some moves that will be a slam dunk on social media? <laughs> We've got Rockets dancer and local contestant on NBC's Dancing With Myself, Sydney Ying, joining us in studio to show us Shakira's latest dance challenge. Uh-oh, I hope we don't have to do that. Uh, Houston Life exactly will be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
NBC's Dancing With Myself is one of the most popular competition shows of the summer, and a local college student recently had the chance to showcase her fiery moves <laughs> in front of the show judges, Shakira, Nick Jonas, and Liza Koshy. Her name is Sydney, who also happens to be a dancer for the Rockets, and she's joining us in studio. It's so great to meet you. It's so great to meet you guys. Thank you for having me. What an incredible experience that you have being on this dance. I mean, Dance With Myself, this show is exploding, number one. How did you get on it? It was totally random. I had someone, a casting agent, actually DM me on Instagram, like request to follow me, and I thought it was a scam and so I looked him up on LinkedIn to make sure that he was real and that the agency was real and then from then on I somehow made it. And is it true that you found out you landed the show right before a Rockets game one night? It was. It was on a game day. I was super nervous and, and uh, my producer called me and I just started freaking out in the bathroom in my you know full uniform and it was really exciting. It is so cool and a little bit more about you because we need to brag on you for a second just not only being part of NBC's new hit show, but you're an upcoming junior at Rice University and double majoring in sports management and business, and you were a competitive ballroom dancer growing up until high school, and you have national titles as well? Yeah. It sounds like a lot when you put it all in there. It didn't happen all at once, but yeah. And you've been dancing your whole life. I have. So I started ballroom dancing. I guess for some dancers it might be late, but I started around seven. I competed around the country and then in high school, focused on academics, and now there's college, and now I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so great looking at all these photos of you on the dance floor, and I know you're juggling a lot. You're officially the youngest member of the Rockets dance team. This is a grueling audition process and also a performance schedule. It takes a lot of work to do this. It takes a lot more work than you think it does when you sign on to it, but it's been the best experience ever. What a rush that must be. It's so fun, and you're, you're gearing up for the next round of tryouts for this upcoming season, which happens in August, so we're cheering you on as a veteran. We want you back on the Rockets to, uh, to dance alongside the games. Um, okay, so are we dancing? Dance time. Yes. Why don't we lose these chairs? Okay. Sydney, what are you going to show us uh, this, this dance combination? And I understand we have to do it along with you. Yes. I'll show you maybe one time with music before, but it's a lot of hips. Just a heads up. A lot of hips, a lot of body rolls. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Shakira's the one who dances it, so, you know, all the hips don't lie. Right, Just kind of right. bring in some of that. So, okay. who want I'll show you guys one time with music, and then we can go over it together. Perfect. Okay. All and right. we've got the split screen with Shakira. Oh. oh. Yes. So she's starting here. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. It's like a belly dancing routine. <laughs> and then you kind of groove it out. <laughs> Listen, you are a great teacher, I can already tell, but I have a feeling I'm gonna fail this. Okay. No, you guys are gonna be great. You guys are gonna be okay. great. So the first step is you're gonna roll your hips down and out. There you go. And then back around again in another circle. And then imagine doing a body roll. So you're gonna roll it down and then roll it back up. Easier said than done, a body roll. <laughs> I don't know so how to do a body of roll. Think of your hips going down and then your hips going up. There you go, there you go, exactly. There you go. Why do we have the worst angle on me? <laughs> Can you get over here? You look great, okay. I promise. Okay. And then your hips go to the side, so a little side hip action. And then this part, you're gonna go, your hips gonna go down, up, down, down, up. Down, down. Up? Yeah. <laughs> you got. We'll Am go I over. turn the right way? I'm this not. way. This way. Down. Okay. Up. Down. Down. Up. There you go. Oh, good there lord. There you go. <laughs> okay. Halfway there. Halfway there. All right. You're gonna do a little shimmy. This one, you put your own flare on it. There you go. Your hips and everything. You're gonna bop one, two. Was that a bop? Yeah, a I bop with your hip. One. There you go. Exactly. Bop. One, two. There you go. And then you're gonna turn to the back. You're gonna shimmy a little to the back, and then your arms are gonna pump. You're gonna go in, out, in, and then just groove it out. Okay. Groove it out, add your own flair to it. This is very advanced. Why don't we put it all together and just <laughs> yeah. see how it goes? We're gonna be watching you. Here we you. go, yeah. We'll okay, put it together, let's try, let's try it one time. Let's okay. try it one time. I don't remember how we start. But call it out though, so we... Do you want it with music? I yeah. think so, yeah. Okay, let's do with music. Okay. Okay, ready? Five, six, Five, six, seven, eight. Hip roll, hip, hip roll. roll. Bring it down, bring it up. Move your hips to the side. Ready? And then you go down, up, down, down, up. There you down, go. Up, down, 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 down up. up. There you go. <laughs> and then you're gonna bring it around and do your little boop, boop. One, two. 
Bring it around boofing, to the back. We're going to tell our viewers, we hope you have been uh, <laughs> playing along with us at Should home. <laughs> Sydney Yang, thank you so much. More info online at HoustonLife.tv. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be back right after this. Oh. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we're taking a day trip to Galveston. Yeah, building sand castles on the beach, riding a dolphin boat, checking out all the new hotels, and of course, eating like locals. Plus, details on the parades, fireworks, and a brand new drone show at the seawall. That's right. Well, that does it for us today on Houston Life. KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock is happening right now.